Okay, uh, this talk is going to be about the um, an update to the housing bubble. Uh, this was when I was out, <clears throat> I guess the end of uh, 2016, taking some video here and I'll occasionally point out something uh, that you're looking at in this video. Like the water was really calm, not much swell, which is pretty unusual. I've taken out my kayak around here before and my stand-up paddleboard and gotten pretty rocked. Whereas this, this day, which was, um, I think December 30th, was extremely calm. I just happened to be walking around, uh, decided I'd take some video to document it. Anyway, so, uh, as far as the housing bubble goes, I kind of developed a thesis, which is that the, pr the primary driver of the current real estate bubble is China. And I believe uh, it stems from the fact that they that the U.S. never really recovered from the Great Recession. Most of the uh, jobs that were gained back were low paid, kind of unskilled um, type of jobs. Of course, the um, Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, didn't help in that employers wanted to minimize uh, the number of full-time employees on their staff that they would have to pay health care benefits for. Um, there's a record number of people out of the workforce. Of course, some of that is baby boomers retiring. But we never got back to the levels of consumption prior to the Great Recession, which I hate that label. Um, probably in retrospect, it'll be a, just a slow motion depression. Here I think I'm pointing out why I take my kayak out at times over there to uh, to uh, snorkel or spearfish or whatever. Um, anyway, so because the U.S.'s consumption didn't come back, China being the country that manufactures for the U.S., um, never came back. And I think they tried to stimulate domestic consumption by pumping a lot of money into their economy. And I think that's where you see all these um, ghost cities develop. Um, and a lot of that money, I think the insiders recognized that that wasn't going to end well. So they, they took their money or smuggled their money out of the country and put it into Canada and Australia, countries that had benefited from uh, natural resource extraction from China to manufacture for the U.S. and for Europe. Um, I was just pointing out there that the water from this blowhole can go over the right side here. Um, at times, I just a few minutes before I filmed this, I saw it happen. Fortunately, I didn't get any of that on video. Anyway, uh, so... Um, Australia and Canada's real estate markets have gone vertical because of Chinese buying. And then people who sold, in turn, went to other areas and kind of drove markets there as well. Canada was the biggest buyer, I think, in 2014 of real estate in Hawaii, as well as Manhattan, I think, in terms of total dollar amount. And... Um, of course, Australians have gone on a property binge. Um, and so, but it all comes back to China. China took a lot of money out of the country and put it also into Southern California or certain neighborhoods, uh, areas they really like to live in. I think Irvine might be one of them. Um, Northern California, too, the Bay Area. You also had a couple of other tertiary effects that were in some cases very big drivers and one is the um, fracking uh, phenomenon that stimulated the economies in a lot of places um, 
And so places like North Dakota and Houston probably had booms in real estate, social media, uh, a lot of these fake, another fake dot com uh, boom. Some some companies are real, but some uh, are a joke that will never make money. And you got IPOs like uh, Gourmet Grilled Cheese Company, I remember, as being uh, particularly humorous for, I think, a $100 million valuation for assets of just a couple lunch trucks. Uh, you can read about that online. It's hilarious. And there was also the stock buyback phenomenon where companies issued debt at low rates to buy stocks, which, which would then allow insiders to sell without uh, taking a big hit to the share price. And those people probably put their money, uh, their gains into uh, real assets like real estate. So you have a lot of different factors going on here. Um, another look, thing to look at, again, with China is the Baltic Dry Index, which is a measure of shipping activity. That never, I think, really recovered from the Great Recession of 2008. So there's just not been a lot of activity going on. That's why I think uh, this whole bubble can, well, not the whole bubble, but the primary driver has been China. Uh, and I think it's just a dead man walking at this point. Uh, yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, so there's also been um, uh, comments about how the um, how there hasn't been a lot of inventory coming on in a lot of places. I think San Diego is one of those places people follow a lot. There's been a dry up in activity and purchases as interest rates rise, um, but not uh, a big rush to uh, list property as of yet. And I think that's kind of um, causing people to think, oh, that maybe we're not in a bubble or bubbles aren't going to be mirror images of each other. If it was, then the Probably after the first or second go around, they won't happen again. Uh, each one is different. Um, different markets go up at different times. I mean, there's there may be a general correlation, but there's the exact timing can vary. I, I recall the last bubble, San Diego was first out of the gate after uh, market after rates got cut and after 9/11. Um, and it was, I think, one of the first to top as well, um, whereas other markets were still going pretty good uh, uh, like a year or more later. So it, it takes time. Uh, in fact, Hawaii was still going strong a couple years later. It took a while for, for uh, the memo to reach Hawaii. And so there's a, there is in some places there's where there was a lot of building that went on. I think Bay Area, maybe downtown L.A., uh, some of those places you're, you're already seeing price cuts. A lot of that was designed for uh, some uh, yet-to-materialize luxury market. And so that stuff is going to, I think, really have a negative impact on all the lower tier real estate um, in that in those areas in that they're gonna have to really cut their prices um, there's a lot of just uh, wild cards and who knows uh, what the economy's in for uh, with this next president and and what impacts pol you know trade policy will have uh, but I, I think the the uh, the top is in. It's just a question of how, um, what kind of a uh, velocity to this decline are we going to see? Is it going to be um, pretty brutal, or is it going to take some time due to other policies, maybe lowering taxes and other trade policies? Hard to say. Um, but y'all, you see, uh, um, you already see weakening in those big bubbles of Canada, 
Australian cities like Melbourne and Sydney taking a hit. I was in Australia back in March of this year, and it was clearly a mania. Everywhere you went, people were marveling at uh, prices, and they were extremely disconnected from reality. A lot of uh, emphasis was on the Asian buyer in the urban areas, and then the retirees would take their gains and go to newly built communities, uh, more rural, coastal communities. So there's a lot of construction going on, but uh, just not enough. The population there is just too small to support a lot of the development that's going on. So, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they handle things. Uh, anyway, so uh, I think that's it for now. Uh, may have some updates in the future depending on what I see.